In this video I'll be taking apart the Motorola Razr 2023, also known as the Motorola Razr 40. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate and the top flip cover to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry them off. Here's a closer look at the vegan leather covers. There's also some graphite film underneath to help transfer heat. This is the bottom cover. There are now 14 Phillips screws which need to be removed. And some of the screws are different sizes, so make sure to label them or organize them correctly so you won't have a problem when reassembling the device. This metal cover over the battery connector needs to be removed and there's some adhesive or glue underneath it which you'll need to carefully separate from this flex cable. Now the battery and wireless charging and NFC cable can be disconnected. Now I'm not sure what sensor this is, it might be the sensor to detect if the flip has been closed, but I'm not 100% sure. Looking at the subboard, we can see a rubber gasket around this connector, as well as the charger port, and the primary microphones located underneath the shield. On the other side, we can see a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly, and there's some graphite film over it to help transfer heat. The vibrator or haptic feedback motor is located on the bottom corner, and it's held down with some adhesive. 
Moving on to the battery, in order to remove that, there are no pull tabs provided to help you pry it off. So you will need to use some isopropyl alcohol applied to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the larger battery, and keep in mind there are two batteries in this phone, and the capacity for this one is 2,965 milliamp hours. Here's a better look at the external display. There are now 7 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. The cover can now be lifted over, but be careful since the flex cable is still attached underneath. This LED flash and laser focus and ambient light sensors. Here's a look at the other side. There's some more graphite film over the motherboard as well as the battery to help transfer heat, which can now be peeled off. The battery cable for the battery on the top flip can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There's a 64 megapixel primary camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. The main camera has OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top and another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. There are also rubber gaskets around these connectors. Looking at the other side, we can see the 32 megapixel front facing camera, as well as the connectors for the other cameras, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a proximity sensor located here, the sim reader below that, and more graphite film on the back shield top transfer heat. Once the copper tape and graphite film have been peeled back, we can see a metal plate on top of the processor and RAM. And here's a look with the metal plates removed. The metal plates are 0.5 millimeters thick. To pry off and remove the top battery, there are also no pull tabs for this, so we're going to have to also use some isopropyl alcohol on this battery. The capacity for this battery is 1,235 milliamp hours. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the wireless charging coil and NFC antenna. And the flex cables right through the flip from the top half to the bottom. And there's a cure in place gasket on either side holding it in place. If you had to replace that, you'd also have to disassemble the flip and use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife to cut out the gaskets so you'd be able to remove the flex cables. The power button and fingerprint sensor is also held in place with a cure in place gasket. So again, to remove that, you'd have to use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife to cut off the gasket and then pull out the button. As for the volume keys, the flex cables routed through the mid-frame 
So you would actually have to pry out the main screen or the folding screen to gain access to that flex cable. And the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. There's one more liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker on the frame. The cable over here is for the folding screen. So if you need to replace that, once you have the bottom portion disassembled and the flex cable disconnected, you would heat up the front portion of the phone to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You would pry off the plastic border, and then you would have to apply more heat and pry off the folding screen from the frame. Now I'm not going to pry it off since it's a working screen, and there's a high chance of damaging it when prying it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the covers. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.